southwestern Wisconsin, one of my favorite regions in the state, and no, I'm not just saying that. One of the reasons I love it so much, this river, the mighty Mississippi. And the journey is half the fun, so I don't care how you get here, you can walk, you can bike, or take a ferry like this one. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. This is an anthem For those who look for more And never say they've seen it all Windows and words take a ride The Grandlands Grain Tonight The Mississippi is steeped in history. I mean, not only are the towns filled with stories that go back centuries, the river itself has several old-time riverboats that cruise its waters. We start today in Crawford County, where the Celebration Bell is docking. So Scott, tell me about this boat we've climbed all the way up onto the top of here. Well, the Celebration Bell is the largest excursion boat on the whole Upper Mississippi River. We can carry up to 800 people on board, and it's a four-deck excursion boat. So what are, what's it like just going up and down the Mississippi River all the time? I no, mean. it's peaceful, beautiful, lots of bluffs, getting the color starting to change on the leaves. Mm -hmm. Just very peaceful. What are some of your favorite sights as you go up and down the river? What do you like to stop? What do you like to point out to the people that are traveling? Uh, the people are more interested in the wildlife, especially the eagles. Locks and dams are always a big factor, of course. And just a, a lot of the history of the river that we go by as we make our way up and down. And that's a history that goes back to what, the 1600s? Yeah, so 1700s? we've read a lot of books. There's a lot of history on the Mississippi River, all about the steamboats. We tell them about, about everything we know. And so, Scott, what's your favorite site along the Wisconsin part of this river tour? Uh, the bluffs of Wisconsin, you can't beat them. They're beautiful. Lots of small towns like Cassville, Wisconsin. We go through a, a gorgeous little town with a ferry that crosses there. Just a beautiful ride up this way. These are about the highest bluffs on the Mississippi too, aren't they? They are extremely high. I mean, all our clients that are on here are from all over the Midwest, and that's, they point that out all the time, how beautiful this area is up here. I'm gonna check out the bluff firsthand with Nelson Dewey State Park, Wyalusing State Park, Blackhawk Park, and Sugar Creek Bluff State Natural Area nearby, you can easily spend all weekend hiking and taking in the majestic scenery. Good morning from the Sugar Creek Bluff State Natural Area. There's beautiful hiking trails here. We're taking in vast views of the Mississippi, looking for birds, listening to the birds sing, and then listening to the rumble of the trains that are going all the way up and down the Mississippi River. David Traster is leading the bird walk today, and I have a couple of questions for him about the area. This is a unique topography for this state, right? Absolutely, yeah, as you can see, the, the bluffs around here, uh, some of the most extreme topography in the state, uh, known as the Driftless region, because it was untouched by, by glaciers, so we have these uh, characteristic ridge top, uh, you know, bluff prairies, we have north slopes, south slopes, uh, usually all steep topography, um, but that, that array of the different aspects give us uh, a lot of diversity in our plants and animal species. And how extensive are the trail systems around here? Throughout Crawford County, just outside of Crawford in uh, Grant County, Wyalusing State Park has a, an amazing trail system. That's the confluence of the Wisconsin and Mississippi, so some of the best views, in my opinion, in the state. But we, we do have a lot of uh, public land in, in this area, owned by the DNR. We have some owned by the land trusts, such as Mississippi Valley Conservancy. So it, it, there's definitely a lot of opportunities to get out onto these landscapes and see what's out here. Biggest fork, you yeah. go to the left. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. it's two-thirds of the way out that branch. Okay, we're looking at a scarlet tanager. Yeah, a scarlet tanager, a uh, beautiful red and black bird. Um, usually in, found in dense, solid woodlands. He's in the right place. Yeah. What the region is known for is bald eagles. They sometimes wait for fishermen to throw back in fish to scoop them up. Well, the best time to see them is in March. It's hard not to see a few hanging around the banks at any time of the year. You really can make your trip filled with whatever floats your boat. Visit us at discoverwisconsin.com. 
Up next, we look at all the ways you can fish on the river. Welcome back to Mississippi River Towns. So I'm here with Catfish Bob. We're out on the Mississippi River at Potosi. And we're going to do a little fishing, kind of a different style of fishing than the typical rod and reel. So first of all, Catfish Bob, what do we do different in a river versus a lake? What's the difference in the fishing? Well, river fishing, we're commercial fishing, so we're going to set up some hoop nets. So we're going to hoop fish, and what other kinds of fishing do you do here? Because you, you kind of scoop them all up with these, right? Well, these will be put out, and then they sit under the water for like three days, and then you raise them again. So. Okay, so you lay these out yep, there and wait, are, then you yep. come back. And the fish are swimming in them, and they're not supposed to swim back out. <laughs> You can stop by Catfish Bob's and pick up bait, or if you can't catch a fish, you can buy some for dinner. If you want to fish on the river but don't have a boat, check out Clements Fishing Barge in Genoa, Wisconsin. How do you reach Clements Fishing Barge? You don't call, you don't tweet, you don't Facebook. You raise the flag. This is a pretty unique setup now. We're, we're on the Mississippi River. And there's people fishing all day long. So how does this operate? How do you how do you work all this? Well, it was uh, originally started back uh, right after the lock and dam went in, 1936. My grandfather used the actual timbers they used to make the dam, and he laid them out here, and he used the logs for uh, to make a dock. And uh, he wanted something that was affordable alternative for people to go fishing. Back in the day, not everybody had boats. And it was a nice, cost-effective alternative to go fishing, get out on the river, get out on the Mississippi. And we do it to this day. I mean, to this day, we still bring guys across the river, and uh, they fish all day or how long as they want. What's, what's fishing like on the river compared to other places? There's so many different species of fish in the river. And the reason they, they all migrate into an area like this is because there's so much bait in the water. So when it comes through the dam, there's a lot of feed for the minnows. So the minnows move in, the shiners move in, so then all your other fish move in after them. Your bluegills will come up here and your northern will chase the bluegills and there's such a variety of fish that will come into this area. There's other places up and down the river that you can target, say, northern, or you target walleye or just bass. But here you can target anything. It's been a little while since I've fished and I've never fished in a river, much less the Mississippi. But I may get lucky, you never know. One place where the fish are abundant is the fish hatchery in Genoa. Well, it's a... Uh part of the community that uh, we're trying to open up more and more to so that people can, can see the, uh, the value of uh, preserving our natural resources. And we, we try to do that through these fishing events, not only this uh, spring fishing event, but also an ice fishing day that we have in February as well and a number of open houses. And quite honestly, we have a, a very vibrant Friends organization as well, the Friends of the Upper Mississippi River, that helps sponsor these events and uh, also uh, has a very conservation mission as well to uh, preserve the Upper Mississippi River natural resources. Still waiting for my first catch at the barge, but others are having a lot of luck. And even when the temperatures dip in winter, people still come out to fish. Well, we're having an ice fishing tournament in Stoddard. We have about a hundred people here. It is a kind of a family event. It ranges anywhere from five years old to 105 years old, so just having a, it's just good to come out here and have a good time. There's people that come out from all over the place. There's, they stay at the cabins in, in the marina here and uh, they give away a bunch of door prizes that are donated by a lot of businesses around the area. We have some food, pulled pork and hot dogs and just some simple foods for the guys that get hungry afterwards and a uh, little bit of beer and pop and whatever you want to do with that. Well, okay, I've caught like one and snagged another one and everybody else has caught what, 67? <laughs> Literally that was a number, 67. This one goes back, this one goes back. Visit us at discoverwisconsin.com. Up next, I'm traveling back in time to Stonefield. Welcome back to Mississippi River Towns. Alan, what do you think is most fascinating about Stonefield? What makes people go, wow, that's pretty amazing? Well, I think it's maybe different things for different people. 
It's the home of Nelson Dewey, the first governor. We have the village of about 30 buildings and a 1900 farmstead. But for myself, it's the State Agricultural Museum. Now, I know history lovers love it, but you guys are also doing some really cool events as well, right? Yes. We're an interpretive center for the Great River Road. And the third Saturday in September, we do the Great River Road Festival. With Today actually is Stonefield Railroad Days. We always hold it the third weekend in August, and it's an opportunity to uh, get your hands dirty and have some fun. Can you see it's sinking through? Okay. It's just about ready. I can see a little black line. Going to define farmer chic. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's blacksmith. Is that a verb? Can we say let's blacksmith? Slower. Slower? Slow and steady? Yeah. Too much fire? Yeah. Just slow. You got the pace. All right. What's up the camera? Oh, oh my god. I'm wearing flip flops. Probably not the best footwear. No, it ain't. Oh yeah. I'm a looking. What are you doing? Uh oh, it's going down. Yep, back in the fire because it's rehardening. <laughs> yep. Alright. That's right. Okay. Should be ready to start the curl I was telling you about. Huh? We gotta make some s'mores after this. Yeah. <laughs> to the north, Prairie du Chien has the beautiful Villa Louis historical site. My name is Desiree, and I'll be giving you your tour. On our tour, I'll be introducing you to three generations of the Dousman family. We're going to be introducing you to them in the 1890s. The reason why we've chosen this time is because it is the most well-documented, and we do have the most information for that time. I know, it's going to be super cool. <laughs> I learn something new like every single day and I actually find the people's lives, like the servants and everyone that worked here, I find that really interesting. A lot of it we don't get to share on our tour just because it is so much history, but learning about those I find really interesting. This is a working kitchen. We do have a lady that comes and cooks. There was a cookbook that we found that belonged to Jane Dousman. It was written in French. These are some recipes from that time. When they had it translated over, there was some pretty interesting instructions in there. Things like a clump of lard the size of a hen's egg. Or my personal favorite, cook until done. <laughs> If you're into military or medical history, you have to check out Fort Crawford. I meet up with Mary Antoine, president of the Historical Society. This is the spot where the second Fort Crawford was located. And so the history of Fort Crawford has a lot to do with Wisconsin expansion and settlement. And we start out with the, the early history with Fort Crawford and, and Blackhawk. But Prairie du Chien did expand and there is a lot to do and see here. At one time it was considered one of the more important communities in Wisconsin and speculation it was going to be larger than Chicago. Oh really? Oh yeah, because of its place on the Mississippi. Mississippi River. So a lot of our exhibits have to do with things on the Mississippi River. Um, clamming, the first railroad that came from Milwaukee to Prairie du Chien, and um, all the people that lived here. Well, it may not be bigger than Chicago, but it's prettier. I can say that, right? Yes, you may. <laughs> oh, little buttons. So they make buttons out of these clams. Is that crazy? It's a little bitty boat on the big boat. No, I'm not a bug expert, but it kind of looks like a grasshopper. Yeah, their legs are thin. You think they can jump really high? Yeah. Head to discoverwisconsin.com to begin planning your adventure.
Welcome back to Mississippi River Towns. I love seeing all there is to discover at the Travel Wisconsin Welcome Centers. It's amazing all of the free information available and helpful staff in Platteville to help you get to your destination. Welcome Hi. to Potosi Brewery. Thank you. Great to be here. Can we uh, look around? Come on in. All right. The Potosi Brewery is an amazing place for people all over the world to come visit. We're right on the Mississippi River. We are on the Great River Road. Uh, we have a National Brewery Museum. It's the only National Brewery Museum in the entire world. So we're here at the National Brewery Museum, which is in the Potosi Brewery. And which part of the museum are we in right now? Right, right now we're in the Transportation Museum. And this illustrates the different modes of transportation the brewery used during the 120 years that they operated here in Potosi. Potosi was a little unique in the fact that they had a steamboat. And then this building here is a recreation of what the brewery saloon across the street looked like. And that building was built in the, in the 1906 or 1907. And some of the original signs, the glasses, the bottles, all of the classic ways that they enjoyed Potosi beer products back then, right? Or promoted them. This sign's from 1902. Yes. Wow. That's and fantastic. Some of those signs were lit and some of them were not. So we're in the cave now, which Correct. means we're in the limestone, right. the hillside. And, and they would have dug this area out in order to lager beer in the 1850s or 1860s. Right. Limestone caves that are, well, what, 150? No, this one, this particular one's old? probably 160 years old. They brought the, the cakes in here and fermented the beer. <laughs> Fermentation's always where the action's at. The brewery is one of the amazing attractions on the Great River Road, and what better way to see it than in a classic car? So Gary, you're in a beautiful part of the state. What do you like most about being able to drive these cars around here? Well, it's just wonderful. To, uh, I like driving the Great River Road. You get a group of people together and we just take off and, and drive. And you can see the Mississippi River, the railroad tracks, and all the beautiful countryside. I think Eric's going to be a while looking at those classic cars. You might not have a classic car of your own and you may still be on the other side and need to get over. That's when you take a trip on the Cassville Ferry. Load up your car, bike, or you can walk on and take in the sights. Whatever your vehicle of choice is, get to the Great River Road in these great towns. And in the summer, the farmer's markets are the place to be. From crafts and food in Ferryville to fresh produce and music in Viroqua, it's a great way to take a break from the road while still taking in the scenery. Wherever the road might take you, be it a museum, the brewery, or the open fields, the atmosphere will leave you speechless. Okay, so this is my challenge to you. Grab a camera and a friend, maybe a map or two if you're prone to getting lost, like me, and head on over to the southwest corner of Wisconsin to explore the many towns, the beautiful area right along the Mississippi River. I'm Mariah Haberman, and I'll see you next week on Discover Wisconsin. For more information and bonus video from this episode, go to discoverwisconsin.com. And don't forget, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Discover Wisconsin Radio all across the state. I'm wearing flip-flops, probably not the best footwear. No, I think. <laughs>